Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. Well, I hope everyone is doing okay, especially if you live in uh, the tornado zone. That was so awful. I cannot believe it. Um, part of this video is going to be on the birth pains. So I had to light my candles. This one's really good. 99 cent only crackling cedar wood. And it's got a burnt wood smell that I really, really love. So, okay, today was the diet day. And I was pretty bad. Uh, I started out good. For lunch, I had um, some bacon and some scrambled eggs. And that was good. But then it went down south because I was eating cookies and tea. So I have a little uh, tea left over from yesterday. Oh, no. You didn't see this. I think it's mint tea, my favorite. So I uh, cooked up all my lemons. I didn't want to go out today because it was very, very cold and the traffic was terrible. Uh, the coyotes are howling out back. If you would like to see the coyotes that live by me, go to my uh, Twitter. I posted a video. One of the neighbors must have videotaped them. So uh, one of the best things in honey and tea is honey and lemon. So the diet is pretty uh, boring. You know, it's mostly low carb, but I'm gonna be doing a little more cheating. Not extreme, but a little bit. And then, you know, I have reconstituted lemon. Uh, I, I uh, stockpile quite a few of these. A uh, strong possibility it might provide us, I'm just going to use like a half a teaspoon, it might provide us some uh, resistance to the oxy, I want to say oxycodone, the oxycoronavirus, 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. So, sometimes my followers uh, drink tea while they watch the videos. So, um... You know, I have YouTube followers and I love the comments. But I also have customers uh, for eBay that live all over the country, Kentucky and Illinois, and I was praying like crazy. So if that is one of you, we're praying for you out here, everywhere in the country. So, in the name of festivities, what did I do? Well, I made a tasty little batch of fudge. Okay, this is a really good recipe. Here's my little uh, knives. Uh, when I went to the swap meet, I sold a bunch of these. One of the ladies, I didn't sell this one because I love it. It's so cute. One of the ladies, when I what I did was... I threw things in a box and she just like carefully went through uh, the box and she bought all of the tea party stuff. And I said, yeah, that's a true collector because those boxes were a big fat mess. I just made this, it's delicious. My grandmother's candy had the most delicious taste to it. And no matter how many times I made it, I could never figure out how she did that because she didn't use a candy thermometer or anything. So I got this good recipe and I used my thermometer and I heated it in with the sugar in there until it was 235 degrees. Then I turn it down and I cooled it to about 110. And I was fooling around and I let it set a little too long, but it's so delicious. The homemade stuff is the best. So I had this in the stockpile. Uh, I used all but I think it was three or this is uh, 4.4 ounces, so I estimated 4 ounces, and I ate the remaining chocolate. I had Dollar Tree walnuts, 
and I had one of these. Normally, I use evaporated milk. Let me give you the recipe. Uh, this is a great book if you can get one. I got it in a thrift store for a couple dollars. Let me give you the fudge recipe right here. It's right here. Let me give you a close-up of the ingredients. So you can take a screenshot. Here's the rest of it right up here. Once you learn how to make fudge, you can make divinity or you can make any kind of uh, candy, really. Uh, fudge. This makes one and a half pounds. You know now, um, the, the, the chocolate candy out here, the good chocolate candy is about uh, $25 a pound. Like so many things, the best fudge is made with simple ingredients. Here are, here are the two that matter the most. Top quality chocolate and fresh cream, preferably not ultra pasteurized. Okay, so I didn't have ca access to um, a cow and I didn't go to the store and get any cream. So I had this in the stockpile. So I just use that, but normally I use evaporated milk. Two tablespoons unsalted butter plus some for greasing the pan. Four ounces unsweetened chocolate, chopped. I just threw mine in the milk, the cream. One cup heavy cream. I just used the whole can. Two cups sugar. So a lot of the, the fudge takes like three, five, six cups of sugar, but this one only takes two. A pinch of salt, one teaspoon vanilla extract. I forgot to put it in. <laughs> but if I did put it in, I would have put Mexican and one half to one cup chopped, not minced, walnuts or pecans. I just heard last night pecans are the most nutritious nuts. You know, nuts are really good and fudge. <laughs> Let the butter come to room temperature while you work. Grease a nine inch pan before um, nine inch square baking pan. Two, co combine the chocolate and cream in a medium saucepan over low heat. I think this is one of the tricks. You're cooking your fudge on low and you're stirring it continuously. Cook stirring const constantly until well blended and smooth. Add the sugar and salt still over low heat and cook stirring until the mixture boils. Okay, now you don't want to turn it up high because that's how you can burn your chocolate. Stop stirring and cook until the mixture ma measures 236 degrees Fahrenheit. So it says in some of the books that it takes about a half an hour. Uh, well, it's on low. It's going to take a while. A small piece will form a soft ball when dropped into a glass of cold water, but thermostat is an easier and surer test. Yeah, that is true. Um, I bought a thermostat, not really expensive, at Walmart. I had one, I bought a Dollar Tree, but somehow I wrecked that. Immediately remove from heat, add the butter, but do not stir. When the mixture is just lukewarm, add the vanilla and beat vigorously with a wooden spoon. A mixture is smooth and has lost its sheen. So what I did was I didn't start stirring it in time. And I forgot the vanilla, but it's still very delicious. Uh, add the nuts if you like. Scrape into a prepared pan. When the mixture is hardened, cut into squares. I cut mine right away. Wrap well and refrigerate fudge. Keeps for weeks, but is best eaten fresh. <laughs> I can I can attest to that. Okay, so the homemade fudge is very festive. And when you get the red, the, the old recipes, I also put one on my Twitter for the Hershey chocolate, but the real chocolate works the best. So I bought this chocolate, you know, when I was doing the cookie making. The homemade is the best, you guys. Okay. 
So, I love to report the news. Growing concerns over harassment of sea lions in La Jolla. This is a San Diego news, so go to my Twitter. So what were these San Diego people doing harassing these sea lions? Well, they were approaching them and they were petting them and probably feeding them. You're not supposed to do that. So they're thinking about fencing it off so the people, and the sea lions are down for it. They're very friendly. They don't want the sea lions domesticated. They have a lot of things. They say the babies, the mothers will let the babies starve and, you know, stuff like that. Okay, so now um, for dinner. I dehydrated this beef jerky. Uh, so, you know, beef can be a little bit expensive. But um, what I did is I just lurked around. And it's so much cheaper. I, I give some to the dog. So, and then I keep it, you know, and on the diet days, I'm not going to try to eat this because it takes a long time to chew it. I freeze it and then I get it out and I eat it. So what I like to eat is beef jerky and boiled eggs and then I have some vegetables in there. So let me show you my festive stuff. Okay, I've had this a long time. This is nice. Let's see if I can show you. Uh, here's some little, here's some little medallions. Uh, every once in a while, I sell them. Uh, last year, well, when I went to the swap meet, this one, the glass, you know, it's old and, you know, it reflects. But this is pretty old. I've had it a long, long time. And, uh, last time I went to the swap meet, I sold one of my, um, my medallions for a dollar to a jeweler. It was a little silver one, but I thought let someone else um, enjoy it. I knew she was a jeweler because I had this table just piled full of jewelry and she walks over and picks up this one little uh, medallion. I've had this a long time too. Uh, I bought these, there was vendors at the junior college And uh, these are not easy to find, really, because nobody who has them, nobody who has them generally sells them. And then this is from Germany. It's not expensive, it's just pretty. Um, I try to find pins. Here's one of my pins, see this? This is a cute pin, I love it. It's festive. And then uh, uh, this one's upside down. It goes this way. See the, this is really pretty. This is a vintage pin. These are easy to sell. I mean, you guys, what if I need money? Ha, that's a bad thought. Here's one of my medallions. I bought this one day at the thrift store. It's not expensive. I like it. Now, uh, this is pretty old, and one of my brothers had, uh, I think this was from one of my brother's shops. And this is really old, like, let me show you the medallions. They're not valuable at all. Sometimes I take wax and I, I press my medallions into the wax. It's very beautiful. Okay, so now, now, all these, um, what we better do is prepare for the worst. That's what we better do. And so uh, in the Bible, it talks about the end of times are like birth pains. You know, the, the Lord will come, but prior to that, there will be birth pains. So what will we see in, in birth pains? Well, we'll see a disease, famines, war, pestilence. So we've had uh, pandemics. This is going on two years. A lot of people were saying uh, in China, we can survive one year, but if it goes two, we can't. And this is our second year. And then tornadoes. Okay, the Bible does not mention tornadoes, but it mentions 
hail. And if you've ever been in a tornado, usually hail comes with it. I've been in some really bad hail storms caused by um, a coming tornado. I was in Tulsa and it veered off. Uh, they're scary. I wasn't scared, you know, being from California, but when I got home and they started to hit where I was really, I got to tell you, it raised the hair off the back of my neck. They're, they're terrifying. So I have always said, if, if everything falls around me and I saw the house stand up out of the rubble, I'm going to have to uh, trust God. So you might be thinking, well, you know, what is it? When you say that, what does that even mean? Well, if we knew that these things that are happening are the birth pains and we somehow stood up out of the rubble, you know, we would be grateful to God that we survived because the end is coming soon. That's a sign. So, uh, you know, I used to do the uh, healing um Ministry, really, tell you the truth, it used to piss people off. Just because you believe in miracles doesn't even mean you can get one yourself. Doesn't mean no one can get one. You don't know who's going to get one. And so some of the mo the hardest miracles are uh, to believe for are restorative miracles. Things are just destroyed and you think, how can, how can this be restored? Well, you have to, uh, you have to um, believe for a miracle. That's how. Like, um, you know, that's like we celebrate uh, Christmas. With man, things are impossible. With, with God, all things are possible. We have the fires out here. And this girl I used to work with lived out in the back country by the Takati border with five kids. And her whole house and everything in it was burned down. And some Amish people came, now mind you, some Mexican girl, and built her house. So if your house has been destroyed or you know someone, maybe reach out to the Amish. I'm sure you can find those people online. I mean, be open to any help you can find. It never help, hurts to, it never, never hurts to ask. The best thing is, is like when I pray, I pray, God, I don't know how you're going to fix this, but I know you can fix this. I have been in some, I have been in some things and I have thought at the time, this is not happening, but it was happening. So now what we need to do though is prepare. So now if your whole house is destroyed and you stand up out of the rubble, at that point you're just praising God that you weren't killed. So what we want to do is say, okay, if this is the birth pains, and it probably is, we want to prepare because this is not going to stop. The birth pains just keep coming. Anybody who's ever given birth knows that you're not good. So what I want to do is I want to look back at what people did, and I want to try to do this. Now, if, if you can get out, that's all the much better. So what I want to do is look at what did the pioneers stockpile? What food did they stockpile? Well, they stockpiled flour, could, oh, and uh, supply chain disruptions, one of the things they're saying is flour. Now, what ginormous country do we know that was hoarding food, in particular flour? Yes, China. Flour, cornmeal, these are the pioneers. Flour, cornmeal, potatoes, beans, rice, salt, sugar, lard, bacon, fruit, dry fruit like raisins or uh, apples. And another thing I didn't think about is uh, cast iron skillets. So I'll be buying those when I see them in a thrift store because I want to start a um, like a traveling salesman business at the thrift at the swap meet. Okay, so now let's go to the ranchers. We had the ranchers on the other side. Beans, biscuits, dried meat like this. Uh, someone said they were drying all the meat in the freezer they could. That's not a bad idea. Dried meat, dry fruit, coffee, and salt pork. Uh, I have always bought bacon, but you know, I think salt pork is a good thing because it's small, but it's not cheap. So I'll be buying some. The things I'm going to be looking at is lard, bacon, 
dry meat and salt pork. Okay, now for a recession, wheat, rice, oats, pasta, beans, and sugar are things we might need in a, a recession. But if you think about it, like if you were going to evacuate, wouldn't it be so much easier to grab 25 pounds of flour than cans or uh, glass jars? If something happens, you're gonna have to leave those, but you might have five or 10 minutes to load your food. You know, you might be able to load flour, cornmeal, potatoes, beans, rice, salt, sugar, lard, bacon, and fruit. Okay, so now what might be short in a supply chain disruption? Evaporated milk. Babies with no milk? No. Cooking oil? No. Tofu? Now what country do we know? <laughs> Turkeys? That sucks, you know. Bottled water? That's not good. Uh, carbonated drinks. Uh, there was a recall on the canned Coke. So I had stockpiled up Coke. Unfortunately, none of mine was the bad Coke. Canned products, bread, and liquor. Now that is bad. Toilet paper. So now, just to talk about stockpiling for a supply chain disruption. Flour, rice, noodles, beans, lentils, oats, and pasta. And here is a shot of the page. So what we can do, like I put stars by mine, lard, bacon, um, what else did I put a star by? Dry meat and salt pork. Okay, today, today I went to the store and I only bought one thing. This is cheap and it'll make half of several sandwiches, like eight or 10. And so I wanna pile my uh, freezer full of lunch meat. Okay, you guys, I hope everyone is festive. And if you're in the area that was wiped out with the tornadoes, um, there's only one way through a real disaster, and that is just one day at a time, or maybe just like an hour at a time. And then what I do is I try to do everything I possibly can to make it better, and then I trust God with the rest. And a lot of times the solutions are something I probably wouldn't have thought of. If your house is destroyed, try to get the Amish people to build you a new one. It might work. Or try to, like, go under safari and say uh, how to get a house, you know? Or maybe consider um, keeping the land and relocating, you know? Uh, they're, they're expecting the grand solar minimum for 11 years. I'd say that would be good. A mini ice age that only lasted 11 years. No, it could last hundreds of years. We don't know. If you're living north, you might want to... Another thing is, okay, like in the waterways, they're very easy to learn. The water will run from north to south, generally. And on the wind, there are wind waves, just like waterways, and it would be a good thing to learn those. Because, uh, like out here, if the... if if things are flooding, we would want to we would want to go um, east, but maybe not with the wind waves. So we have to learn those. You know, those are the kind of things that could save your life. So we have a changing world, and we have to adjust, and that's all there is to it, like it or not. And so then, once you stockpile food, and once you have it into your mind how you could buy food for about a year. Then what you want to do is start accumulating gas, cash, watch out your credit, you know, watch out your credit lines. Okay, you guys, I'm praying for you all. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all.